Our next story contains scenes and descriptions that might upset sensitive viewers. Vulnerable and defenseless even in their own communities. Every year, statistics show a startling number of violent crimes targeting children. And Orange Farm in Gauteng is no different. Just two years ago, three young children in the same neighborhood were murdered within six months of each other. The killings happened in circumstances the community is still battling to come to terms with. Orange Farm, one of Johannesburg's newest townships, home to around 400,000 families. A rapid influx of people without the services to match has seen it grapple with unemployment, drug abuse and crime. Yet nothing could have prepared this already struggling community for the killings of three young children two years ago, the gruesome details of which emerged in a recently ended trial. Some people avoid cemeteries, but for Gogo Nompumelelo Zito, it's sacred ground to connect with the people she's lost. And yet, she never thought she'd have to visit her grandson, Mzwandile, here. What's made dealing with his death harder is that he was killed by someone she considered a friendly neighbor. One minute, five-year-old Mzwandile was playing at this yard at his home in Orange Farm in the south of Johannesburg. The next, he was gone. Hours later, he was found dead in the house, literally right across the street. One morning in April 2020, Gogo Zito called Mzwandile, Wandi, to come and eat. Police joined her initial search, but they couldn't find him. She filed a missing persons report at the station. Gogo Zito knew the couple who ran the tavern across the road very well, but she was stopped from entering before police arrived. Crime scene officers discovered a bizarre scene. Between a fridge and a counter. When I am going to fridge, I am going to the fridge. So young and lento, it too silly. Kakul, Baba Wakon. I know Biza, I'm tired sometimes. I'm in a year more. Okay. So I'm going to go to the fridge. Ponzo Mushanga was the tavern owner's girlfriend. They were often seen around, shopping at the spaza, running errands. Ponzo is a mother herself to a little boy. The couple were arrested. The boyfriend later turned state witness and was released. After being detained for five months, Ponzo was released on bail. As the investigation dragged on, she returned to Orange Farm. Then two days after her release, Watata Vantuana Morgina Malachi lived about 500 meters from the tavern with her eight-year-old granddaughter, Mpo. Two doors down, Mpo's best friend, Simpiwe, or Bangi as he was known, lived with his mom, Busisiwe Mdina. He was six. In mid-September, a mere five months after little Mzwandile's murder, Mpo and Simpiwe also disappeared. They searched throughout the night. The next day brought painful news. Upangi was found opposite Netavin, Ejardin. Then Mpo a few meters. They were naked. The murder sparked fears that a syndicate may be targeting children in Orange Farm. The police, though, had just one suspect in mind. 
In July this year, Ponsa Muslanka stood trial for the 2020 murders. The victims' families demanded justice, but above anything else, they wanted to know why their children were killed. Nothing could have prepared them for the answers. Ponzo gave shocking testimony about dark rituals she claimed were led by her boyfriend's traditional healer. Ponzo testified that Mzwandile was killed during a ritual to grow the tavern's profits. Getting caught and arrested meant that something had gone wrong and she needed to be cleansed. By cruel coincidence, the victims of the sacrifice came knocking. Those children were Mpo and Banki. Ponso claimed to have left the room before the children were killed, and phone records later showed that her boyfriend wasn't at the scene of the murders. In August, Ponso was found guilty of suffocating all three children. This is something that we have seen in an increase, especially in Limpopo area. We've had a few cases reported in Orange Farm area, KZN area. Bianca van Asvirchen is from the NGO Missing Children SA. Their research suggests that 23% of missing children are never found. They're either trafficked or killed. She says no one knows exactly how many disappearances result in ritual killings. We still got two little boys that have been missing, one since 2013, the other 2019 that is still missing in the Orange Farm area. After the verdict, the criminal trial adjourned ahead of sentencing. But there was no break from the criminal onslaught in Orange Farm, where policing leaves much to be desired. You see that place, that police station, it's a motel because they are not doing anything. They find them sleeping there. And he's not joking. This picture of a dozing SAPS member was captured by a local resident. <laughs> because police have let them down so often when people go missing, residents are used to starting searches themselves. Linda Ndebele is often among them. We blow the whistle and then the other members of the community will come and then we gather in one place and then we go and look for that whatever that is happening in our area. Residents have told us that it's near impossible to get through to the Orange Farm police station by phone. If our experience is anything to go by, they're probably right. In the last week, we've tried to call them 10 times with no luck. But ever the optimist, I'm going to try again. Imagine if I'm going through an emergency and this is what I met with. Again later. Orange Farm SAPS meeting our very low expectations of them. The SAPS communications office later informed us the station previously had a challenge with the landlines, but it has been resolved and internal disciplinary steps were instituted against the napping officers. They say that policing is taken seriously in Orange Farm and constructive engagements with residents have yielded lower crime levels and a higher crime detection rate. <laughs> Ponzo's day of reckoning finally arrived on the 13th of September. Judge Lillian van Veek at the Palm Ridge Court recapped the children's suffering. During suffocation, death does not occur immediately. This takes time, however short, in which the accused had time to reflect on her actions. The judge handed down her sentence. This court cannot find substantial and compelling circumstances to justify a sentence less than life imprisonment. Count one, life imprisonment. Count two, life imprisonment. Count three, life imprisonment. 
The sentence may be harsh and deserved, but grieving families say until they know the whole truth about what happened to their children, justice and closure remain elusive. Though police say there is no evidence of a syndicate targeting children in the area, families refuse to believe that Ponzo acted alone. Thanks for watching. Have you heard about our new podcast? It's like carte blanche, but without the Sunday blues. Find Carte Blanche the podcast with new episodes uploaded weekdays on all major podcast platforms. Unique stories, unique perspectives, wherever you go.